Good Monday evening, July 15th, and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. The Stahican Valley is under a level one fire advisory as the Pioneer Fire reaches over 18,000 acres. U.S. Representative Dan Newhouse is traveling around central Washington on an agricultural tour this week. Our hot July heat wave continues with no end in sight. That and all your weather details are coming up. The Washington State Patrol says that a traffic collision on Highway 97 on Saturday left one dead and two injured. At roughly 4.39 p.m., a southbound 2006 Toyota Tacoma towing a boat crossed the center line and struck a 2014 Subaru Forester. The truck became engulfed with flames as both vehicles came to a rest, partially blocking the northbound lane. The driver of the truck, 20-year-old Hayden J. Fisher of Bonnie Lane, Lake died at the scene. His passenger and the driver of the Subaru were both transported to Confluence Health Hospital in Wenatchee for their injuries. It's unknown whether anyone was wearing their seat belts or if drugs or alcohol were involved. The cause of the collision is still under investigation. The Stahican Valley is under a level one fire advisory as the Pioneer Fire reaches over 18,000 acres. Chelan County Emergency Management said on Sunday the fire established itself across Fish Creek, which resulted in a change of evacuation levels on the Up Lake end of the fire. The level one affected area is Lake Chelan, Up Lake from Hazard Creek to High Bridge Ranger Station. Level three evacuations now extend to Flick Creek and level two evacuations extend to Hazard Creek. The fire has been burning since June 8th and is currently 14% contained. The Wenatchee Valley Fire Department officially put its newest ladder truck into service on Saturday with a push-in ceremony at Station 4 in East Wenatchee. Ladder 4 joins the fleet, keeping the valley safe from structure fire. Before officially getting to work, the new truck had to undergo a wipe down from firefighters and special guests and then gets a hand-on assist into its parking bay. At the event, Fire Chief Brian Brett said the custom dates back to the early days of firefighting before the advent of of engines. This tradition dates back to the late 1800s when fire departments used hand-drawn pumpers and horse-drawn equipment. Upon returning to the station after the call, the horses couldn't back the fire apparatus into the station. So it was disconnected from the fire equipment and the firefighters would push the apparatus back into the station, hence the push-in ceremony. In this modern era, obviously the horses are missing, but another key person or animal is missing, and that would be the Dalmatian. The Dalmatians and firefighters have a long history together, and the Dalmatians loved running with the horses. So firefighters discovered this, actually the stablemen and women discovered this, that the attraction Dalmatians and horses had together. So firefighters onboarded Dalmatians, and when they would go on calls, the Dalmatians would lead the horse-drawn fire apparatus and clear the traffic and protect alongside for the firefighters to respond to the scene. And even more importantly, during the downtime, the Dalmatians guarded the horses from horse thieves and protected the fire equipment. The bridge connecting Peshastin with Highway 2 is back in business after nearly a month of deck work. Chelan County Public Works closed down the span across the Wenatchee River on June 17th to carry out a major resurfacing project. That work finished up on Friday and the bridge reopened that night. Locals spent those weeks to North Road and Chumstek Highway to access Highway 2. The Peshastin Bridge is among five county bridges undergoing improvements this summer. Chelan County expects to spend about $3.6 million for all five projects. When we come back, Mary Big Bull Lewis has been appointed to the State Arts Commission by Governor Jay Inslee, and Douglas County is hosting a free disposal day for residents outside of city limits. We'll tell you when coming up. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. How do you think like an entrepreneur? I have had it in mind starting my own business. This is all really good to know right now. 
I am currently making a vision board. I am talking about my well-being, my personal finances, and habits that I would like to work on and to improve myself to be a better entrepreneur. I'm Keith Gaynor, running to be your next 12th District State Senator. It has been a privilege to serve you the past six years in the House of Representatives. I believe public safety is a critical issue that affects all of Washington. This should be one of our highest priorities. Washington families are struggling. Housing, food, and gas prices are severely affecting our budgets. We need to find better ways to support our families. Together, we can build a better Washington. As sheriff, I arrested rioters, rapists, and mass murderers, locked up human traffickers who preyed on women and children. On my watch, everyone was accountable. Despite being the attorney general for 12 years, Bob Ferguson does not take responsibility for the rapid increase in crime and homelessness, businesses moving out of state, and jobs lost. And he thinks he deserves a promotion? Dave Reichert. It's vacation season. While a trip to Hawaii sounds great, we know what you really want is an inflation vacation. That's why Abby's feeds a group of four to six people for less than 26 bucks. Enjoy an inflation vacation at Abby's. You can be a superhero tonight and treat your family to Abby's famous hometown hero. This giant features our classic pepperoni, tasty Italian sausage, and crisp green peppers all layered together for a legendary feast. Don't miss this July special pizza at a very special price. Mary Big Bull Lewis has been appointed to the State Arts Commission by Governor Jay Inslee. Big Bull Lewis is the founder of the Indigenous Root and Reparation Foundation and the now retired Wenatchee Ware brand. The Arts Commission promotes the growth and development of arts in Washington State and advises state officials on matters involving the arts. Inslee's office says the goal of boards and commissions are to give residents a voice in government and influence decisions. Big Bull Lewis's term begins later this month and will end in 2027. A pipe break at one of the Wenatchee Valley's major irrigation systems has left many East Wenatchee customers without water during the driest part of the year. The Upper Columbia Irrigation District says the problem should be rectified by Tuesday, but the break has left many orchardists and landowners with no way to water their plots since Sunday. The broken pipe caused moderate damage to equipment at one of the district's pumping stations, which had to be dried out and inspected before repairs could take place. A second line break farther north in the irrigation system also stopped water to Braze Landing in Arondo on Sunday, but that failure was fixed the same day. U.S. Representative Dan Newhouse is traveling around central Washington on an agricultural tour this week. On Friday, Newhouse will head to Quincy and tour both the Beef Northwest Feedlot and Weber Farms. Beef Northwest Feedlot is a feeding and backgrounding operation, and Weber Farms specializes in potato, sweet corn, cherry, and apple production. During his visits, Newhouse will be briefed on operations and challenges the industry is facing. Newhouse begins his tour tomorrow in Prosser to learn more about agricultural cybersecurity threats with the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, and then artificial intelligence and agricultural research with Washington State University. Douglas County is hosting a free disposal day for residents outside of city limits. On August 24th, the county is partnering with Waste Management to offer two time slots for free disposal at the Greater Wenatchee Regional Landfill starting at 7 and 11 a.m. Free tickets to reserve a spot are available on the county's website. Only 450 tickets are available and all residents must show proof of residency. Residents are encouraged to bring items that cannot be collected during regular trash pickup such as furniture, yard and household waste, and other non-hazardous materials. Coming up next in tonight's feature story, we will reintroduce you to Molly Linville, who came to preside over her husband's ancestral ranch land and the hard road to making it profitable. 
no relief in sight as the heat wave continues right into this upcoming weekend. I'll have the details coming up in your full local weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. The Lake Chelan Chamber of Commerce presents Wonders of Wooden Avenue. Welcome to the newest and funnest fashion boutique on Wooden, featuring mountain chic clothing and men's footwear from Ugg, Brixton, Sorrell, and Free People. Walk on into the Tiffany Blue Building on the second block of Wooden and check it out. It is nearly impossible to describe what you'll find in Lush Life. It's an eclectic collection of items from around the world. See it for yourself at the corner of Wooden and Emerson. Wonders of Wooden Avenue, North Central Washington's premier shopping district. A ductless unit from Carrier can keep anyone comfortable. Take Shelly, for instance. She finds me time in her new attic turned home gym. And with her Carrier ductless unit, the temperature is always perfect. No matter how intense her workout gets. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. At Kennedy Group, we understand that buying and selling is more than a transaction, and it's more than just a house. This is where you will gather with friends and family, and where a lifetime of memories will be made. But buying a home is more than memories. Oftentimes, it's your biggest financial decision. The agents at Kennedy Group understand this and provide real estate advice based on your goals and dreams. Call us today, and let's find your happy place. What does RV stand for? Recreational vehicle or ruined vacation? At Clickit RV, we want you to have a fun, safe camping experience. So for the month of June, get to any Clickit RV store and get a professional propane leak test, tire pressure check, wheel bearings, roof, slide and battery test, and all inspections are free because we want you and yours to have a safe camping season. Thinking of upgrading? Check out their used selection of new and used top brands like Grand Design, Rockwood, Flagstaff, Winnebago, and more. So get to a Clickit RV store near you for a free inspection and keep your family safe. During the July 4th weekend, we brought you our special report from KV Ranch, a 6,000 acre spread in Moses Cooley, where Molly Linville runs nearly 300 head of cattle. This week, we're revisiting the ranch for a series of feature stories. In tonight's feature story, Molly tells us how she came to preside over her husband's ancestral ranch land and the hard road to making it profitable. This ranch has been in my husband's family for over 105, six years, somewhere in there. My husband's father was running it and he had kind of always said to us that he wasn't gonna leave the ranch to us and that he was gonna donate it um, to Nature Conservancy. And so, you know, we were fine with that. That, that was his choice to make. And, and we were both working for US Fish and Wildlife Service at the time. And uh, he got sick, unfortunately, suddenly and passed away rather quickly. And lo and behold, he had left the whole ranch to us. And so, you know, we both had federal jobs, which means, you know, we had things like health insurance and paid leave and all those kind of things. And we had to decide overnight whether we were going to become cattle ranchers or not. And... I was a resounding yes, and my husband was a resounding no, because you know he is raised here and he knew how much work this was gonna be. And so, um, when we got here, there was about 120 head of cows and their calves, and um, you know his father had been in his 80s and he hadn't had a hired hand for a long time, so there was just a lot of broken infrastructure in place. So we're in the Moses Cooley, which if you haven't been out here, people should come and <laughs> take an explore. This is the most westerly uh, flood of uh, Lake Missoula. And so we have 800 foot basalt cliffs on either side of us and um, it's shrub step habitat. We also have 270 acres of irrigated farm ground in the bottom and that's where our house here is located. The ranch is about 6,000 acres, which is plenty. <laughs> so my goal is 
to have about 300, 350 head of other people's cows here during the grazing season. Uh -huh. And um, I've got, what do I have now? Like 280 here right now. So before my business was a cow calf operation, meaning I keep the cows through time and then the calves are the cash crop each year. And um, it's so frustrating because when you show up to sell them, you're a price taker, you can't set your price. Uh -huh. And so like if the market is down for who knows what reason on a particular day and that's when you bring your calves in, you you just have to take it. Yeah. <laughs> and that I worked so hard at raising those calves and to, you know, get maybe a dollar twenty a pound for them. My average day is that there is no average day. I start out with a punch list every morning and sometimes it gets filled out and completed and sometimes one item is <laughs> done and the rest of the day gets wrecked so uh, you just never know. Uh, feel, when we first got here I felt like I was sort of beholden to dead people like I felt like I was ranching for them and it gets really complicated, <laughs> you know, sort of mentally and emotionally. And, and so when I switched to I'm just going to do the best I can, uh, that made things a lot better. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. It was a hot one, 100 degrees yesterday. Today, not quite as hot, but what we did see is that haze from smoke around area wildfires, predominantly that Pioneer fire that's now, as I mentioned, over 18,000 acres. And we're all gonna deal with that over the next few days. We're also gonna deal with more hot temperatures. We are gonna be in the mid 90s to around 100 and I think these days could be at 100. Moses Lake, you'll get there. OMAC as well. We are going to be hot and then as we get into Wednesday, we could see that we're going to see a weak low pressure system move through and that means we could see some dry thunderstorms on Wednesday, lightning, some strong gusty winds and if we do see rain, not going to be much to that. So keep that in mind as we head into Wednesday. Today a little bit cooler, unofficially 96 degrees, 80 88 is where we should be. 105 our record and that was in 2014. Look at that low again this morning. 72, 62 is where we should be. 50 our record in 1986. Sunrise 520 and it sets tonight at 853. Getting into those Tuesday temperatures. Here we go with the triple digits once again. 101s from Moses Lake into Afreda. Also Quincy, Wenatchee, Eniat. 102 for Chelan. 130 three tomorrow in OMAC and even Lake Wenatchee tomorrow, a very hot 96 degrees. The reason that big area of high pressure that's kind of been with us for about, well, this is about the 10th day of this current heat wave and the top of that ridge goes all the way up into British Columbia. Tonight, we'll see a little bit breezy conditions, clear skies with lows mainly in the upper 60s. On Tuesday, some morning haze, a lot like we're seeing today, and then mainly sunny skies in the afternoon and hot with highs right around that 100 degree mark for your midweek Wednesday. We're going to see some increasing clouds in the afternoon, about a 20% chance for late afternoon thunderstorms. They could be severe too, right along the Cascades on Wednesday afternoon. We're going to have plenty of heat to really fire those up too with highs around 100. On Thursday, sunny and hot. Most of the instability will move to our east into Montana. And again, we are going to be near the century mark at 100 degrees for your Friday to end our work week. It's going to get even hotter, folks, if you can believe that. All over eastern Washington, hotter temperatures, highs in the low 100s on Friday. And the same goes as we kick off our upcoming weekend. Sunny and hot, high temperatures again in those low 100s, 111 in Las Vegas, 111 as well in Phoenix on Saturday. And then Sunday, what can I tell you, folks, our heat wave will continue. We are again, maybe some high clouds, but we're again 
going to see highs in those low 100s. All right, your seven-day forecast, 67 overnight tonight. Morning haze giving way to sunshine in the afternoon tomorrow and 101. Maybe those thunderstorms on Wednesday, and we're hoping we don't see any lightning. That could be a disaster as dry as we are around the area. Once again, triple digits. Triple digits for Thursday with sun, 101 on Friday, and then this weekend, scorching hot. Sunny skies on Saturday and Sunday with highs both days around 102 degrees. That's a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Jefferson Robbins with NCW Life. Summer is here and the time is right, I guess, for another primary election. We'll be covering all the candidates running for Chelan County and Douglas County Commissioner right here on NCW Life. Our interviews with those candidates begin airing the week ballots go out the week of July 15th. Keep an eye out for that right here on the NCW Life channel. Well, a happy Monday to you. Not necessarily a happy Monday if you're a Mariner fan. The Mariners sputtered to the finish of the first half of the Major League season, losing three straight to L.A. by one run, including a 3-2 loss on Sunday. Seattle earned a 2-0 lead after being no hit for six innings on a bullpen day by the Halos. Mariners starter Logan Gilbert equally as dominant, allowing just two hits and shutting L.A. out for seven innings. Seattle's bullpen ran into troubles in the eighth when Ryan Stanek came out of the game with the bad back. Five pitches later, Austin Voth gave up Joe Adele's three-run home run that proved to be the difference. Fly ball, driven deep, right center field, and gone! The Mariners' first hit comes in the sixth inning. It's a leadoff home run by J.P. Crawford. And the Mariners take the lead. Well, 101 off the bat for J.P. Crawford. The slider into a lefty can be a good pitch, but it's dangerous if you don't get it where you want it. It's got to be down enough or in enough, and that one was neither. Well, now he takes off for third, and he collides, it looked like, with the glove of Drury. The ball is into left field, and here comes Robles. He scores standing. The Mariners add on in the seventh. They get a break to go their way. Do nothing. We've seen Victor Robles really swing the bat since coming to the Mariners and now using his speed he slides into third and his head hits the glove and knocks it out of the way. That really sprays that one a four pitch walk and Stanek I don't know if that was him not feeling comfortable he's kind of wincing a little bit and here comes Scott. Yeah, that was pretty obvious after that last pitch that does not look good. First you weren't sure if it was just frustration after that pitch but then a uh, split second later you could tell he was just very uncomfortable. Looks like he's pointing to his back perhaps his back tightened up in some way. Uh, clearly frustrated Brian Stanek. Now we have got a new pitcher coming in. And a breaking ball is hammered out toward left center field. Robles chasing it near the wall. It's gone. Joe Adele serves a three run homer and the Angels go on top here in the bottom of the eighth. What a blast from Joe Adele. Crushed it out to the gap in left center field. Got it over the wall. And there was the one big swing after the back to back walks to start the inning. What a swing Joe Adele. Fly ball, shallow left center. Zach Meadow is calling for it. The Angels win the series against the first place ball club. Three straight one run wins. 3 2 the final today. Joe Adele's big swing in the eighth changed the course. How impressive is this victory? Logan Gilbert was ridiculous on the mound for Seattle, but a couple walks and then a, the best play in baseball, by the way, winning the three run home run by Joe. Adele. Seattle heads for a much needed break after the All-Star Week this week with Logan Gilbert and Andres Munoz heading for Texas to represent the Mariners in the All-Star Classic. Seattle will host a battle for first place with Houston beginning Friday at T-Mobile Park. Well, Texas helped out the Mariners by taking two of three from the Astros over the weekend, including Sunday's 4-2 win. Houston remains a game behind Seattle in the American League West, while Texas is five games back. Oakland beat up Philadelphia 18-3 to finish the break in
in last place at 37 and 61. Yesterday, also the first day of the Major League Baseball draft, Seattle chose a pitcher who throws both right and left handed. The Apple Sox finished a two-game sweep of Cascade Collegiate Sunday in non-league play, 21-5 the final. Game was so out of hand, it allowed Coach Mitch Darlington and Xander Orohudos to get in the game. Orohudos had a little better success than Mitch did at the plate. Mitch Darlington is stepping up to the plate for Wenatchee. Xander Orohudos is on deck. No bad one. First pitch. <laughs> First strike one. <laughs> what more could you say right now? 21 to 4, Sox in the lead. The 0 1 to Mitch. Outside for a ball. Now, Orahudos, for one, he looks like a guy who just stopped playing a couple of years ago. <laughs> Mitch, you know, the batting gloves missing isn't helping him. He swings and misses up high. Did you announce it? Go ahead. A 1-2 offering. And Darlington takes the ball. Early hit hitting. Head coach Mitch Darlington. Two balls and two strikes to count. All who was on deck to pitch. Flying a nice first strike three. And Evan Panton has stepped over the on-deck circle now. First coach to Laura Hogan. Now the first offering coming to Ethan Ammerman. Ground ball back to the mound. Flip to second. Darlington receives the throw to first in time. A double play to end it. Right back to the mound. Fired to second. And the skipper sends it to Vassar at first. As Wenatchee wins this one. It's not the first time a coach has played for the Apple Sox. Ed Nags was the first to do so for Wenatchee back in 2001 in a July 6th non-league game against Yakima. He came in to pitch in the ninth and wound up pitching four innings of relief because the game went 12. Ed wound up having shoulder surgery the next year after tearing his labrum in that uh, game. This was Mitch's second time playing as he came in a couple years ago with assistant Aaron Vaughn pitching a scoreless ninth inning. Wenatchee's off for the All-Star break in Bellingham this week before hosting Yakima Valley beginning on Friday. We are scheduled to broadcast Friday's game here on the NCW Life Channel. Join myself and Brandon Schmitten for the call. Our pregame gets underway at 6.30. Checking the other WCL plays Sunday, Bellingham nipped Nanaimo 6-5, Kelowna clipped Cowlitz 8-7, Port Angeles edged Kamloops 6-5, Ridgefield down Springfield 6-4, Walla Walla caught Corvallis 3-1, Portland beat Bend 7-3, Yakima Valley slipped by Northwest Star 8 to two in non-league play. Second half standings going into the break have Wodanchi, Bellingham, and Kelowna all tied for first at five and four. Nanaimo and Port Angeles are a half game back, while Kamloops, Edmonton, and Victoria trail by a full game. Ridgefield is hot to start the second half. In the south is their nine and zero. Oh. Portland is a half game back at nine and one. Ben and Corvallis, the first half winner, are three games behind. Well, they had some electrical problems with the lights, but still got some racing in Saturday at Wenatchee Valley's Super Oval. Efreda's Beck, uh, Bart Hector Jr. took first place in the Rockstar Energy B-Mod Ted Mitchell Showdown. Hayden Idaho's Jeff Bird was second, followed by Quincy's Glenn Knutson. Chloe Hudson was declared the winner in the IWS Sprint Car Series Thunder in the Valley main event. Second went to Colville's Chris Oaks, and with West Richland's Douglas Cody finishing third. Victoria BC's Troy Tarbuck won the, OT, the OTRA Can-Am race main event. Second went to Naples, Idaho's Casey Cavender. Uh, Jamie Morgan of Souk, BC was third. The Northwest Focus Midgets main event went to Polsbo's AJ Fugit. Tyler West of Stanwood was second, followed by Bonnie Lake's Dalton Christmas. Speaking of Christmas, WVSO will feature Christmas in August in their next race. It'll be a throwdown drifting showcase August 3rd. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Have a happy Monday.
And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more news from around North Central Washington, you can find us at ncwlife.com, on our social media channels, or on our mobile app for iPhone and Android. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. Email us at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night.